In this video, we're going to talk specifically about the Excel skills that are needed on the Uber Analytics test. Of course, there will be tons of tons of different Excel skills that will be needed, but we'll just talk about the main ones that if you understand these main skills in the exam, uh, I am sure that you will pass the test very, very easily. Uh, what's important is there's going to be a number of different ways to solve these problems. We recommend a certain way as part of our course on on course take on the Uber Analytics test. But in general, I'd like to go through a few of the important skills that you should know before you get in, uh, because uh, the earlier you practice, the more you practice early on, uh, the easier it will be during your two hours in the test. So let's get started. One of the most important skills that you will be using during the test is the concept of you know creating and manipulating pivot tables in Excel. So this is uh, an example of an Excel file that I have here. Um, that is, you know, a, a, absolutely a real file that you're going to get on the test, um, and um, it's 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 you know obtained. Uh, we obtained this file, uh, you know, from uh, uh, from you know one of the test takers, mm -hmm. and uh, as you can see, the first thing that I've done is I've manipulated the data to make sure that the date goes all the way to the bottom. Um, that's all. Also, an important tip, you know, once you get this file, you'll get. The file in this particular format and then there'll there'll be these blanks on the file uh, during the test and you don't want to waste time uh, you know during the test uh, trying to figure this out and you know write any formulas or do anything to during the question so the easiest thing that I've, I suggest is just you know create a copy of the file create a copy of the data and just you know make sure that you copy the dates down that'll just make things a lot more simpler. And then this is now your new data file. So the first concept is, you know, the concept of pivot tables. Again, there are multiple ways to do this and to create pivot tables. I'm just going to walk you through one simple way. So I'm going to select this data and go to insert. And then you can see pivot tables. As you can see, the entire table is already selected. Or if you if you want, you can select the appropriate table of the range. You want to make sure that it's on a new worksheet so that you don't manipulate the existing data you want to keep the raw data the way it is so that you can always come back to it whenever you need it um, and then I'm just going to create this pivot table and now you know say your question involves uh, dealing with dates you want to select dates if your question involves dealing with uh, say the number of fulfilled deliveries or whatever it is you want to select those and then most likely you know you'd have to move things around as you can see by default Excel puts things in this values column here, so you might want to move things over here. So now you can see for each of those dates, the sum of total fulfilled deliveries is, is shown on the right here in column B. So again, you know, very useful uh, to, you know, understand how to do pivot tables. You might want to do a sum, an average. Uh, in that case, if the if the question calls for an average, you want to, you want to definitely change that. If you click on that little icon, you can clearly see that you can change that out to an average and then say okay so that you know you'd be able to manipulate and you can now see for each date what is the average number of fulfilled deliveries um, and then you know you might uh, the question might ask you to do something else which is you know sort this data find something in this data but just getting familiar with with pivot tables and how to use them is going to be very important as part of the test um, the next thing that you can do as part of pivot tables, of course, you can manipulate things in your columns. So if you want to see things on a column basis instead of rows, you can move, um, you know, uh, you can move the date field to the column, and now you can see everything, um, you know, by column instead of by rows. And then finally, you can also um, do something known as filtering. So if you want to filter by a specific, uh, uh, say, the number of delivery requests, and so you now. I'm going to move that over to oops uh, filters oops I don't know why that's not working uh, there you go sorry that was my bad so I'm going to take uh, there you go so this basically shows that you've got uh, the total number of um, Oh, I think that I got it. I got it the other way around. So let me put that back there. There you go. That's what I wanted. So our original data, our original pivot table had uh, the rows, and then telling, showing you the number of fulfilled deliveries on the right, and you sorted it by you um, got everything summed up by you know by adding them all up through the pivot table. But now you want to also add a filter. So you know, say you want to see everything that's above, uh, below eighty. 
86, right? So you can just say, hey, these are the only three numbers that I want to deal with. So 80, 81, 83. So, you know, so this basically says, hey, give me the sum of the total number of fulfilled deliveries where the total number of delivery requests were less than 86. So that's how uh, you would do that in the pivot table. So pivot table is very useful, um, you know, helps you sum data, average data based on date. Uh, another extremely important piece of the pivot table is that it's also able to, uh, to, to do something known as grouping, which is very interesting because you might have to group by day, um, you know, on the exam. So that's extremely important as well. So for example, let me just go back to my original data set, number of fulfilled deliveries, I'm taken by sum. Then if you, if you right click on this date column here and you can say group and outline, if you do group, you can start grouping by, you know, days, hours, months. So if you say, hey, I want to group by days and then I want to group by every two days. For example, as you can see now, you've set uh, the entire pivot table up for, uh, you know, different groups. So this again, again is important because on the exam, you might get a question related to groups. You might say, you know, what is the on what periods of time or you know what four day period or what two day period or what three day period uh, was the sum of the total number of fulfilled deliveries the highest and then you know you can group things ac accordingly you can sum it or average it based on your pivot table and then you know go from there so that's extremely important so that's that's kind of pivot table at a high level very important concept you know you can use it for pretty much every question because you can do a lot you can you can average you can average numbers you can sum numbers you can manipulate numbers you can filter numbers you can group them in a certain way so you can pretty much do a lot of information but more importantly you can also do a lot of sorting and you know searching of the data so so we just um, I'm gonna open my fields my pivot uh, table options once again oops where did that go my uh, field list there you go so you can also you know search for information so for example if you want to you know you can uh, click on click on the this little icon here and then you can actually search for certain days um, as well so it's you know pretty useful from that as aspect as well if you're if the question calls for a particular date um, on the exam you can just search you know for that piece of data immediately within the pivot table itself so again very useful and you can also sort you know so sorting is another piece of of information if they if the if the question calls for finding the highest or the lowest value uh, you can always you know make sure that you sort this data appropriately as well so uh, you know so in this case if I want to just uh, uh, sort by fulfilled number of so you, I, I just showed you how to sort by you know this is the date sorted in an ascending order but what if you wanted to sort the number of fulfilled deliveries so you can go to data and then uh, you know you can uh, you can just sort and you, know, you can sort by ascending so you can see clearly that everything is now sorted by ascending so make use of this data field or this data tab in Excel uh, very useful again to sort your pivot table so you can create the pivot table get it into a state that's well organized and then sort your data quickly search your data quickly and do just a lot of things uh, you know within within the data set itself so that's the concept of sorting and searching. Um, we've talked about pivot tables. The other concept that's that's kind of interesting is this concept of goal seek. Um, you know, some of you probably have heard of this concept before, and if if not, you know, it's it's uh, um, it's good to know. But it it basically involves the concept of you know when you have a formula in Excel, if you have some sort of a formula in Excel, um, and you want to you know. Um, uh, achieve a certain goal uh, by manipulating one of the inputs of that formula. You want to basically reverse engineer a particular piece of information. That's when you'd use goal seek. So let's just take a very simple example. Say you have two formulas and you have two inputs, A and B, and then this is nothing but A plus B, which is your formula, which is you know the addition of A and B. So if I put A as 10, and if I put B as 40, you can clearly see A plus B is 50. Um, now, what if I wanted to figure out what A should be so that my A plus B number is, you know, 300? So I want my A plus B number to be 300, uh, but I want to figure out what I should set A to be. And that's when you'd use something known as goal seek. 
So you want to set your cell A plus B to value 300 and then you want to do that by changing cell A. And then if you let this run, you can clearly see that A should be 260 for B when B is 40 to get your A plus B is 300. So that's the concept of goal seek is like you set what your goal is and then you want the algorithm to run to reverse engineer what the input value should be in order to get that particular goal. You want to seek that specific goal. And the reason this is important is because on the Uber analytics test, you might get cases where you'd have to do some of this. Um, you might have to set up a formula talking about drivers um, and what their total profit number is. Um, and then in order to be able to get to a certain profit number, what are the number of hours that they need to put in? So you want to reverse engineer the input to that problem. You want to set it up like the way I set this A plus B, um, uh, this formula. You want to set it up in a way that you can easily uh, backtrack the input in order to achieve a certain goal. So maybe the question might ask for something known as break even. What's the break even point for for the for a certain driver? And what do you need to do there? So that's again when you'd use uh, goal seek. So that's another important thing. Uh, so what have we talked about? We talked about pivot tables, we've talked about sorting, we talked about searching, uh, you know, making use of uh, goal seek in order to achieve a particular goal. Um, you know, if you aren't familiar with formulas in Excel, I highly recommend that you study some. But you know, you might want to use some formulas on the exam. So for example, uh, you know, formulas could be just in Excel, this is, you know, hopefully you know this, but if you're not, if you use equal to, it basically kickstarts the prof process of using formulas in Excel. And now you can just do things like, you know, 78 plus, uh, you know, and then you get, this is just an additional formula, for example, or you can do division, for example. So this might be important too. And then there are a number of different formulas that can be used in Excel. There's average, there's uh, the sum of something. Uh, there's the product sum of something. So there's these different formulas that can be used in Excel as well that are very useful on the test. Um, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be worried too much about those. You might, you definitely have to, you know, manipulate a few uh, numbers. But more importantly, if you understand pivot tables well, if you understand sorting and searching very well, um, if you understand goal seek very well, you should be good to go on the test. And then if you know some basic formulas like sum, average, etc., um, you know, you should be you should be good to go in the exam. The other concept, um, uh, you know, outside of just formulas and numbers is the concept of charting. So at times in the exam, you might want to chart some data out quickly to just see some information. So in that case, you'd use, you know, insert, and then there's these charts, you know, now sometimes you might just want to use a line chart. So for example, you want to find out on what hour, um, you know, of, on, on what hour, was the was the highest number of delivery requests. So if you had that particular question, you would first want to create a pivot table because you want to group by hour. So you'd do that, you'd say pivot table, create this data, you choose the hour, delivery requests, you put the hours in the row, you can see everything is summed up here. But now instead of, uh, you know, instead of just doing this by, you, the, well, one way to solve the problem was be, would be just to, you know, just pick the highest number among this, which should be easy. But I'm just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to do it by, uh, by using a chart. And then you can say insert, um, uh, oops, insert, and then go to chart. And then, you know, if you put this chart up, you can clearly see how this data is all laid out here. And then you can see, hey, you know, on, on the third, uh, the highest is on this fourth chart, which is number 16 here. And so, you know, you can, you can do it that way. Uh, uh, you know that that's definitely one way to do it. Um, the other ways you can you can chart a line graph, which is another easy way to do things. So insert, go to the line graph, and then do that. And then again, you can see that hey, you know the highest point is 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 somewhere. Oops, I got that wrong. Um, oops, I messed that up. Sorry. So let me choose the data again and say insert line graph. Um, there you go. There you go. So the highest is at this fourth point, and that fourth point is you know number sixteen. So you could say you know an hour sixteen has the maximum number of uh, sum of delivery requests. So so that's it, folks. Um, again, check us out at Course Take. We've got an amazing course uh, that is actually uh, you know very well priced as compared to a lot of other courses on the market. We provide a three hundred page uh, PDF 
that gives you tons of questions and answers. Um, we give you multiple, um, you know, a two hour presentation on everything that you see here. Plus we give you three CSV files, which teach you long answer, short answer questions, how to manage your state of mind when you're going through the test. And there's just tons of information there. Um, you know, so we, we definitely recommend that you check that, check us out. Uh, and you know, we can definitely talk. And if you have any questions, you can email us at support at ghostic.com as well. Uh, all right. Thank you again. And we look forward to teaching you and helping you ace the test. Best of luck.